at least online for me, I can be my authentic, most comfortable self and just be me and be chaotic and play a game and talk to people. Whereas like in person, I like I'm a whole person there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Since, like I have to like make sure I I feel like at least I have to make sure like I'm like dressed appropriately or like I like my makeup's done or my mm-hmm. hair looks good or <laughs> I don't have headphones covering half my head. Like, <laughs> Could you imagine have... friendships defined by the fact that you have to wear pants and like at any given point? Like I think true friendships are where the pants are not. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I'm wearing pajama pants right now. You would never know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm being my most comfortable self. Hello, friends, and welcome to Gamers Gab, the podcast by gamers for gamers. I'm Artsy from The Artsy Gamer. I make art, I play games, and I encourage others to do the same. And joining me for today's episode on online friendships, specifically on YouTube, is the one, the only, the amazing May Plays. So May, before we get started for today's conversation, if you could, if you would, uh, give us a little bit of a, a lovely introduction about your sweet self and your pronouns, please, and thank you. Yeah, so uh, my name's Ashley, also May Plays here on YouTube. I um, started making content on YouTube probably about six months ago. I do a lot of cozy games like Animal Crossing, Coral Island, all the, you know, cozy, chaotic madness. Um, I recently got engaged, I got a new job, all these new things are happening, and um, I have a degree in forensics, so that's a little fun fact. And my pronouns are she, her. So, May, you are one of the (laughs) first co-hosts that I was really inspired to reach out and be like, hey, so what do you want to talk about? And Mm -hmm. when you had mentioned all my friends are on YouTube, I think it was during a live stream of yours. Yeah. (laughs) You you seem to come about it as sort of a level of, of being embarrassed about it. And I think it's a really cool conversation. So why did you want to talk about this specifically? I feel like I wanted to talk about this specifically, not only because before me being on YouTube, did I not know that there could be such a strong community and like Mm -hmm. bonds of friendship within Mm -hmm. like a community online, but like also there's many other content creators and people within online communities that just don't feel like their friendships within those communities are valid, like they're not real, Mm -hmm. quote unquote. So, yeah. That's actually a great segue into the the first of our talking points, because um, I, I guess we already sort of maybe know the answer to this question based on your introduction to it. But what was your relationship with online communities and friendships before you became a content creator in uh, 2022? So before becoming a content creator and going on to YouTube and doing the whole the thing, Mm -hmm. um, I did not have like really a presence on social media or any online communities. Like I didn't have an active Twitter account um, before making a YouTube channel. I had Facebook, but I never used it just because of family drama. And then um, I had an Instagram account. I still have that same Instagram account, but I can't tell you when's the last time I posted on it. So mm. like, <laughs> same. so online communities before YouTube like just didn't exist to me. Um, before making my YouTube channel, however, I did make like an Animal Crossing Instagram account that I made um, post about builds that I'd make on my island, et cetera. And um, I didn't really have even a presence on that platform. Like I maybe had a hundred followers max over there. Um, So like an online community of people and like forming bonds and relationships with people was just something that I didn't think was like a thing, you know? Like, I knew that YouTubers knew other YouTubers, but, Mm -hmm. like, I didn't know that, like, they knew each other. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? (laughs) No, I totally understand. Uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah. So being able to be a part of a community, like, the one that I am a part of here on YouTube and, like, the cozy content community, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, being able to be a part of that and seeing and having the friendships and the relationships that I've, like, been able to make with creators such as, like, yourself 
and Peyton's Corner and others. Mm. Um, like it's mind blowing. <laughs> it's mind blowing to see like from having no friends or no community to having like this lovely, amazing community that I'm now a part of. What's really fascinating is I think that online friendships in general have always had a hard time being legitimate to the outside world because, you know, it's online. So people could mm -hmm. not be who they are. And it's so funny to me because in my 20s, all of my friendships effectively were online because I had been abroad. My husband and I were in a yeah. long distance relationship for the majority of our friendship and then our relationship, including into our marriage. And so I'm so used to the idea of being connected through things like Skype or Discord mm -hmm. or Facebook Messenger when I used Facebook. And it was really interesting to transition from, you know, people I had met or I had been friends with and connected online to people that I've never met in real life and probably never will due to money and, and time constraints. And with yeah. the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, societally, at least from a certain industrial standpoint, we started realizing that in-person relationships, either in in-person work environments, mm -hmm. were not necessary in order to staying connected. And I yeah. think the transition from having this online presence being, you know, a social media platform to becoming a social platform was not something that I think YouTube expected, especially since the cozy content gaming community. It's not just about, oh, here's my content, like and subscribe. It's like, here's my content, but also y'all, have you seen what my friend is doing with this collaboration mm -hmm. and, you know, checking in and seeing how people are doing health wise. So I, I was really excited to have you talk about this because as I said, I think that there's a, a bit of embarrassment with the fact that YouTube has not just become a social media platform, it's become a social one. Definitely, mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely a very social platform. <laughs> yeah. So um, I guess what a really great transition for that is how have the friendships that you've made online, you know, through YouTube impacted your daily life? <laughs> so before YouTube and mm -hmm. before making my channel and everything, um, I had all of these like life changes happening. Mm -hmm. um, I was moving to a new city that was four hours away from like friends and family that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. um, I was moving in with my now fiance, mm -hmm. um, which was like exciting, mm -hmm. but it was also like very like nerve wracking, like filled me with anxiety and fear. Cause like, what's going to happen? Is this going to work out? Is it not going to work out? Um, moving to like a new place of work and not knowing whether or not like those people would bring me in like I had been there the whole time or if they were going to hate me or <laughs> all this stuff was happening. So I felt alone. Mm -hmm. um, just because of all these life changes that were happening in this new place where I had literally no one. I have no friends or family in this area. Yeah. Um, so it was it was hard to come out, like overcome those like fears and anxieties. And I wanted to do something that would like bring me out of that, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So like I had obviously Brandon to like go and like have support with like <laughs> like support me through these struggles but I I'm assuming anybody who has a significant other knows that you can only go and rant and rave to them about everything until yeah. they're like okay please <laughs> <laughs> okay please we live under the same roof <laughs> go talk to your bestie about this <laughs> mm -hmm. um so like it was hard so then I was like well I'm gonna hopefully do something about this so i start looking into making content on youtube like how much it would be to start buying the equipment that i would need and all this other stuff and then like those things on top of like just mental health mm -hmm. <laughs> if that makes sense so i'm like okay i have to do all of this to start doing this and to make connections and like it was crazy it was crazy anyways <laughs> Life was just crazy and throwing a bunch of lemons at me, and I was, like, trying to figure out how to make lemonade with it. <laughs> um, so, but since starting YouTube, uh, it feels like life has completely flipped upside down, mm -hmm. but in the best way possible. 
So I have these like friends now that like I didn't have before. I have my mod community now, which like bless them. Like I love them so much <laughs> for dealing with my absolute shenanigans all the time. But there are people that I can genuinely go to or like direct message and be like, hey, like I need you for this, that, or the other thing. This is what's going on in my life right now. Like rant and rave to them. Um about just life and not mm -hmm. YouTube things. <laughs> um, I also have been able to like talk to different content creators, like such as yourself, about life things that have happened to me within the past year. Yeah. Um, it's been it's been crazy, but like in the best way possible. <laughs> if that makes sense, I hope that yeah. answered. No, that no, question. no. I think you did. Yeah, because. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, May, you're in your early 20s. Is that correct? Like you, did you just get out of college or has it been a couple of years? It's been, it's been a couple years. <laughs> okay. I'm, but like, I, I'm like in mid 20s. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, you, well, it's a good era, you know, level, level yeah. mid 20s. So the age isn't important. It was more that, you know, after college, I think a lot of us really struggle with creating and forming adult friendships outside of like, you know, we're being thrust in mm -hmm. together with all of our hormones and all of our, you know, academic ridiculousness. And yeah. we, we try to make it work with alcohol and beer pong and, you know, really cheap Box dates line. and stuff. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> and so I think what online friendships have created, especially within the last few years following the pandemic is we are able to find our communities a lot easier because we are not mm -hmm. we're not constrained by a a place you know yeah. like i'm talking to you 14 hours into the future you know i'm <laughs> i'm talking to you literally halfway across the world like literally yeah literally and, yeah literally. Literally, <laughs> literally literally and so what's been really great about online friendships is we are not kept away from maintaining friendships just because, you know, we move away and, you know, we all we mm -hmm. need is an internet connection, really. An internet yeah. connection to yeah. still stay in touch with people who we've either never met or we were friends with, you know, nearby and we wanted to maintain those connections. And again, it it seems it seems like YouTube or online friendships have to go through like this weird, awkward, you know, going to preschool or kindergarten for the first time. We're like, okay, so we like the same things. We're friends, right? Like, you know, <laughs> we, we have the we have the same interests yeah. and, and our, mm -hmm. our younger siblings are really annoying and we both agree with that. Therefore, we're besties. And I think what has been really fascinating about online friendships, and I would love to hear your take on this, is that our language for friendships have really morphed into something as terms of endearment for a lot of people, which is where I think maybe there's a bit of insecurity about the the nature or validity of online friendships. So where do you <laughs> think the insecurity for online friendships, especially with content creation in and YouTube comes from, from your personal experience? From personal, like the insecurities and like the... Well, the insecurities of the validity of those friendships, mm -hmm. I feel, at least in my opinion, comes from just, like, how most of us in, at least my generation grew up, like, stranger danger, like, <laughs> don't go and talk to strangers online, like, that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I feel as though that's really the reason why we have an issue or, like, this insecurity of, like, oh, like, Artsy is my friend, you know, <laughs> where, like, some rando on Twitter messaged me or whatever, like, oh, that's my friend, too. Like, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I feel like that's, like, where, at least personally, where I find, like, is this a valid friendship because mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know this person? Like you said, you're literally across the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 14 mm -hmm. hours into the future mm -hmm. um i've never actually seen you in person and that i feel like can be a a part of being insecure about those like friendships like i've never personally been in the same room with you mm -hmm. i've never had like a dinner date with you and hubs mod like I'm <laughs> or like have seen your child like mm -hmm. type of thing and so i feel as though that could really 
that is probably one of the reasons why we have an issue validating our friendships with other creators and other people online. There, There is a lot of nuance, I think, with in-person interactions where we have a lot of social cues that we learn about being in person. Like, um, for the most part, unless there is some neurodivergence where you struggle to understand and pick up social cues, we can understand mm-hmm. when someone doesn't want to be in our, in our presence and that they don't like us, for the most yeah. part. Um, and it, that's really hard when you have this this shield of being online where you know someone can be like a, as a form of avoidance of conflict avoidance be like mm-hmm. oh yeah bestie totally whatever and then in in real life they're like oh my god this person does not understand that we are like there there is a separate degree of separation and so i agree i yeah. think on one hand the way that we present ourselves online, we should hope, is a curated best part of ourselves unless we're trolls. And so I think it's really hard to be like, okay, so am I am I friends with IRL artsy, like the person who, once they take off, the artsy gamer, which is effectively mm-hmm. Mori, like, is Mori still, like, the same friend on the same level as artsy is with me? And I think that's yeah. really hard, especially with content creators who are, like further along in their journey where, mm-hmm. you know, you're worried like, oh my gosh, am, am, am I taking advantage of their success? It's like, do I want, actually, is that something that you'd be interested in talking about? Because I have an insecurity <laughs> with it. <laughs> like, you have it. Ins- I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I talk up EJ all the time because EJ is mm-hmm. incredible and I love EJ plays with all of my heart just for him existing. But I remember, um, I think he had referred to me as a friend at some point online. I'm like, oh, we're friends. That's cool. <laughs> and and he's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I just I didn't want to assume. I mean, like, I know that we were friendly. I, d- I didn't I didn't realize that we 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 were we were friends. That's awesome. And so that's yeah. kind of the same way. I'm like, oh, I'm pleasantly surprised by the the um the the fact that my friendship feelings are reciprocated. So have you yeah. ever had an instance like that? I feel like the most recent instance of this would be like Twitter circles recently with oh, the new yes. year. Everybody's yeah. posting their Twitter circles. And when I see my face mm-hmm. in one of them, I'm like, hello? Like Pat from Nintendo, mm-hmm. for example. I was in his Twitter circle. I was like, who, what, when, where, why, how? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, it's yeah. so funny. I, I was, I was very tickled by the fact that um, I've been, I've been featured in a lot of Twitter circles, and I'm like, oh wow, wow, I feel like I'm one of the cool kids in high school, and that never <laughs> happened to me. Oh my goodness, literally, yeah. literally. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's so interesting how I, I feel like online circles have been really healing for a lot of people who may have not had really good in person relationships when they were younger. Is that something yeah. that you relate to at all um a little bit yeah Mm -hmm. i would say so Mm -hmm. like growing up and being high school middle school those ages like i didn't have yeah they were awkward years i was a nerdy band kid like i didn't i i didn't have like a circle of friends i had two friends and we were like the three musketeers but like the cool kids i was Mm -hmm. not a part of that type of thing so being and seeing these other creators that are quote unquote like much bigger than I am, Pat, mm-hmm. for example, being in a Twitter circle, I'm like, am I sitting at the cool kids table? <laughs> am, I the cool- am I a part of the cool club? Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, I, I don't totally know. Un- no, I totally understand. <laughs> it's um, it's it's so fascinating how, as you said, that these online presences and experiences are so impactful because I think the majority of us would argue our our time is spent online the majority of the Mm -hmm. time even if we take some time off of social media you know we're still checking in with discord we are still doing you know our thing and so Mm -hmm. it it it's so fascinating how we're still in this awkward stage of really legitimizing our not in person friendships. And, you know, Kaylee's saying that I always feel kind of weird when I refer to my online friends as friends to people in real life. And I I have Mm -hmm. to really push that like, why? Because, you know, for people who are in the military, for example, or who, you know, have to go live abroad for work, I, I don't think anyone would 
make that any less legitimate than, you know, someone being married in the country of their birth. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I would really like to have this conversation more with other people. It's like, maybe we should just do the awkward thing of like, we're friends, right? Like, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> this isn't this isn't just a one sided thing, you know, and I'm passing um, notes back and forth. Oh, I know, like, pass- heck yes, <laughs> if we're friends. <laughs> yeah, oh my- <laughs> Could you imagine? I actually, <laughs> I I would love to draw like this little thing, like we're friends, like you know, through the computer thing, and then people like check yes, <laughs> and check no. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, actually, actually, that sounds amazing. I think I'm gonna do that out of principle, but so that actually kind of <laughs> leads to a really um, fascinating conversation between parasocial relationships and mm-hmm. you know our content creator work friendships or, um, you know, friendly acquaintanceships is how do you navigate the difference between the parasocial relationship dynamics that you have with your viewers or perhaps Mm -hmm. as a viewer to a content creator you look up to but don't know very well versus the online friendships that you've made within the community? So... First off, Mm -hmm. (laughs) before looking at this question, I'm going to be completely honest with everybody listening and you and myself. I had no idea what a parasocial relationship was. Um, So I I did my research. (laughs) So for those of you that don't know what a parasocial relationship is, um, it is a like one sided relationship where one person is extending like all of the emotional energy and time and interest while the other person in that relationship is either like completely under unaware of what is happening or completely unaware of the other person's existence entirely Mm -hmm. um so these relationships can either promote like really healthy attitudes like um oh i want to be just like blah 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 streamer like i really look up to them i want to grow and become just like them i want to do this that, or the other thing and become better myself or it could like make the exact adverse effect ad- or adversely impact your mental health mm-hmm. for example um having negative self comparisons of that other person mm-hmm. um so that person's doing so much better than me. Like, why Why does nobody like me? Like, why? what am I doing wrong? Um, why aren't they talking to me? <laughs> or responding to my direct messages? Mm-hmm. Like, those sort of things. Um, so the way that I feel as though that I've navigated around this um, with my viewers um, is not being like so one-sided if that makes sense Mm -hmm. so i really try to remember names and like stories of people who come into my chat and uh on discord like making sure that there is an actual connection between me and my viewers um and making them feel seen and heard within the Mm -hmm. three hours that they're in my chat for Mm -hmm. while also kind of maintaining the fact that i'm like streaming or i'm making content so i'm playing a game um and then like the actual friendships that i've mentioned before that i've made with other content creators um and individuals like my mods like i've built relationships with these people (laughs) they really feel as though like um like these individuals being the people that i really feel as though i can go to things for Mm -hmm. like i've mentioned before Mm -hmm. um Involving literally anything, whether that be content creation, tech issues, or just basic life up and downs, not Mm -hmm. even the YouTube life up and downs, Mm -hmm. but actual life life up and downs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I feel as though that's how I've navigated my way past these parasocial relationships that may or may not occur within the community, myself or others in whatever, the chat, (laughs) the people. (laughs) So I I think what a a really great takeaway from what you're saying is we don't have to have a one size fits all definition of what being a friend is because, you know, you can have a friendly acquaintanceship, which is absolutely valid. Like there are people who I see that I don't know very well, but, you know, I, you know, do what I can to support them through their content. And they're like, oh, Artsy, thank you. I appreciate you. And I'm like, yeah, I appreciate you too. And that's enough. And Mm -hmm. then there are people like, I've talked to you about personal things. I've talked to Kay Daisy about personal things and 
on Volcado. And so I think there's this building and growing rapport that allows for it to develop further. But sometimes just I, I think what we really struggle with is we are trying to define friendship as we're either friends or we're not. And as I yeah. said, like in our 20s, we have to go through this really uncomfortable phase about forming friendships outside of environments where we're kind of just thrust together with the mm -hmm. hopes of surviving whatever it is. And usually that's school, right? Or yeah. um, or work. There are certainly some creators, this is what Scott is saying, of making who are incredible at making you feel welcome. And there's there is one who May and I both watch, which is Beacon of Nick, and that guy makes everyone feel so welcome. It's amazing. So I think the nature of YouTube becoming more than just a, a media platform and becoming a mm -hmm. social media platform is that within the last few years, with it becoming a social platform, it's allowed and invited people to create communities that are not just viewers or watching. It's more of an yeah. interaction and a creation of a very well-rounded community where, you know, some viewers are literally just viewers. And then there are people who, you know, form friendships and who, you know, create those connections. And then when they start creating content, there's this whole other level of connectivity that, that I didn't honestly expect from my experience. And I would have to say that Right. Gamers Gab and other things that I've done, like drawing comics about people, has been such a wonderful way of connecting with people as people past their mm -hmm. online personas. And so yeah. I, I'm curious how, for you, how do we put into mm -hmm. words the friendships that we've created online? Yeah. I feel like it's hard. It's hard to put into words because for most of us, it's like a new thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. post pandemic, most of our friendships for, you know, most people that aren't like overseas or in the military or like abroad in any way, shape or form, like we didn't have a lot of online friendships. Like the only online friendships that we may have had were on like Facebook with people that we were friends with in elementary school mm -hmm. that we actually never talked to. <laughs> <laughs> so putting into words like the friendships that we have made now like because of the pandemic and because we're all online and because we've made youtube a social platform um i i would feel like i don't know like how do you put into words the, the friendships that we've made if that makes sense like i i don't even know like from starting content six months ago to now like the only words that i would be able to like use is like happiness if that makes sense like mm -hmm. i'm genuinely happier than i was six months ago does I, that sum up the <laughs> sure actually um the question i do have from that thank you for that that uh because now i do have a segue um <laughs> What were your intentions with May Plays when it came to uh, f like making friends and, and community building? Was there even intentions for that? There, there was intentions. So um, I wanted a place where I could go and be myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's hard for many of us <laughs> mm -hmm. to just be yourself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah especially if you were once the nerdy band kid and now you're in your 20s and you're like how do i not be the nerdy band kid well people like the nerdy band kid <laughs> surprisingly um so my intentions behind making may plays in the youtube channel was first of all to find motivation to play games um i had only been playing animal crossing and when i had first started my channel actually i was only playing Animal Crossing, but then I started picking up other games and being able to play games with other people. Mm -hmm. um, so though I'm not physically seeing others play those games, they're playing the game with me. Um, and I'm not alone playing like Breath of the Wild, for instance. I knew absolutely nothing going into playing Breath of the Wild. And then we have um, Kaylee, one of my mods, actually, mm -hmm. who has been, like, every step of the way helping me play <laughs> Breath of the Wild. Um, so, my, like, those were my intentions, was to play games with other people and to build friendships um, based on just being myself and not having to put on 
like a mask and be somebody else. During my my conversation with Pat and Zach on, you know, success on YouTube and how that looks different depending on the goals that you set for content creation. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat had mentioned that there is a distinct difference with content creators that focus on content versus community. And mm -hmm. more often than not, I have noticed that content creators who focus on content tend to bleed over to community building because that's really what maintains a good vibe and momentum for, for growth is that the more that you put focus on harnessing what people uh, want to see in order to feel part of the experience, th the better the experience of just watching is going to be. And so mm -hmm. I find it really fascinating, and Pat probably would agree, the, the sentiments of community building that came first. You know, it's kind of yeah. like the chicken for, versus the egg. What comes first, community versus content? And yeah. it, it almost... It almost removes, as you said, the the mask of of trying to be something you're not because you've created and curated a space that allows mm -hmm. you to be your most authentic self, which is something that Peyton had mentioned is that, you know, she created a space that so she could be her most authentic self and then, you know, encouraged others to do the same. Online friendships have made it almost unnecessary for me to know somebody's real name or their face because i i like right. i feel that the the mask of their their in-person insecurities of of being cool and you know being not that nerdy band kid goes away mm -hmm. because it allows them to you know be the nerdy band kid and uh yeah. you know have numbers in their name so what do you think is the distinct difference between online friendships versus in-person friendships that you find in-person friendships could benefit from, you know, taking on? I feel like the difference is that one is online and one's in person. Uh -huh. So, like, I have a hard time being myself in person, whereas mm -hmm. online, I feel like I can be myself, which mm -hmm. is probably the exact opposite for most people. I don't know. <laughs> um, but at least online for me, I can be my authentic most comfortable self and just be me and be chaotic and play a game and talk to people whereas like in person i'm a whole person there mm -hmm. <laughs> in sense. like i have to like make sure i i feel like at least i have to make sure like i'm like dressed appropriately or like i like my makeup's done or my mm -hmm. hair looks good or <laughs> i don't have headphones covering half my head like <laughs> Could you imagine have... friendships defined by the fact that you have to wear pants and like at any given point? Like, I think true friendships are where the pants are not. Just saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm wearing pajama pants right now. You would never know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm being my most comfortable self. Whereas like in public, like going on a dinner date with your friend, like mm -hmm. I would have to, you know, like put on pants and like maybe some shoes, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, uh, I hope that answered that question. Sure. It, it feels it like there's almost um, a performance that goes to in-person relationships that you, you almost yeah. worry that removing the mask. And I think that's something that I, I don't want to tie in or link to neurodivergence, but I do know that a lot of autistic people say that, you know, once the mask goes down, because masking is a very frequent part of, you know, self-preservation with autistic people, mm -hmm. that once the mask is removed and their friends see, you know, the real them, that yeah. all of a the sudden they're not as shiny anymore and that, you know, oh God, mm -hmm. they're a whole ass real person that has real feelings and, and yeah. you know, has insecurities. And then all of a yeah. sudden we, they just walk. And I think with online mm -hmm. friendships too, is that there is this level of vulnerability that comes forward because there is also anonymity mm -hmm. involved. I, I don't want to ask whether or not emotional honesty is a lot easier to, um, to implement online, but what you've seen with your online friendships, do you feel that it's a lot easier to be emotionally honest and straightforward with with anything going on in your life? I, I yeah, to be honest, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like it is definitely a lot easier mm -hmm. to just be honest about 
anything honestly <laughs> um whereas like in person i'm just like oh yeah life's going great like things are good uh-huh i'm doing amazing uh, whereas American online, uh, how are you i'm fine <laughs> secretly dying whereas, inside <laughs> whereas i log on to a stream and i'm like guys i have like three cups of coffee i feel like i'm going to have a heart attack and die uh let's play <laughs> animal crossing <laughs> Um, or, like, being engaged, for example. Like, guys, I got engaged. This is so exciting. Whereas, like, in real life, I'm like, I got engaged. Ah, this is exciting. <laughs> you know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I, hope so. <laughs> I, I feel it's almost safer to be emotionally honest online because on, on mm -hmm. one hand, and, and Scott had mentioned that the general anonymous nature of the community is something that certainly leads to so many people being more comfortable in who they really are. And it feels like it makes the connections we make more real in some cases, as there's no hiding behind our real hobbies and interests and just being our most authentic versions of ourselves. We may not be comfortable being in IRL. And I think that's because in similar to being thrust into an environment where we have to be there, we are mm -hmm. sharing something that we want to that a lot of other people also enjoy, like Animal Crossing. Yeah. And I think, yeah. as I said, Animal Crossing coming out during the pandemic was one of the major components to really changing YouTube and Twitch and all these streaming channels to really mm -hmm. prioritizing not only their communities, but the well-being and the relationships of their communities. So yeah. I think, oh, that was the grab that I was looking for. So you started streaming in 2022, mm -hmm. and that is, I, I don't want to say late in a in a bad way, but you started your, your content creation journey, especially with Animal Crossing, long after the updates were, were you know, they, they came and they went, and yeah. <laughs> you decided to feature something that you really enjoyed and enjoyed watching. So mm -hmm. how did it feel coming into a very established zeitgeist, effectively, of, you know, the cozy gaming and cozy content communities when it, it just it felt like there wasn't that level of newness and content creators coming together to figuring things out it's like you came in relatively late what was that like yeah. for you it was a little nerve-wracking mm -hmm. i'm not going to sugarcoat it like mm -hmm. going into it i was like okay i'm playing a game that is um quote old mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's two years old now there's no more updates uh, nothing like I can't do anything new. I can't make any new content, especially like videos. Like I can't. Oh, this is a new update. Like this is what you can be expecting. This is what you can be excited for. Here are fifteen new things that are coming with the <laughs> Animal Crossing update. Like I can't do those sort of mm -hmm. things. So it was very like nerve wracking. Like okay, what am I going to do? Like I want to make animal crossing videos and streams but like what am i going to do that is going to pull people in to make me like to make them want to watch my channel or subscribe to my channel or whatever so it was very nerve-wracking especially since there's already so many bigger animal crossing content creators like console kato and Nintendo talk and lex play mm -hmm. like froggy crossing <laughs> mm -hmm. um there's so many big ones so it's like how does little me make an appearance on such a big platform it was it was nerve-wracking you know it, it's so funny when you were i i was actually very surprised that you started you said you started what in in the summer of 2022 or was it a little before yeah, that point? july yeah and yeah. then you started sabotage league with just a couple of months later right yeah oh yeah. my gosh <laughs> and it was so wild to me because you know there are so many content creators that i am just discovering that have been doing this for years and so you really kind of found your groove with being mm -hmm. so genuine and so funny and so just kind and welcoming to anyone that comes into your streams that it mm -hmm. almost felt like you were there forever you know it's it's like what you were saying about facebook with the elementary school kid that you know you knew once and they didn't traumatize yeah. you but you're friends with them it's like oh i know may she's been here for a while you know and yeah. it's it's so fascinating how we are striving to make our mark as content creators but also trying to i think be on the same level of community building as the larger 
the larger channels. HubSmod asks, I'd be interested if May has any thoughts on whether online communities help support and foster intergenerational friendships compared to IRL. Like the, it, it would definitely support like and foster intergenerational friendships. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely like people, I've making friends online and like in the community that are much older than me like mm -hmm. I'm in my mid twenties, but then there's people who are making content that are much older. Um, I'm trying to think of a the content creator right now. Oh my goodness, what is her name? I can think of two know. if you yeah. would if you would like the yeah. Help. So yeah, um, two friends that I enjoy seeing on my chat who are I think at least ten years older than I am are mm -hmm. Kay Daisy and Januki. Both who yeah. are, um, I mean, Kay is a plant mom and a dog mom, and, and Jen mm -hmm. is a, a mom mom, and both <laughs> have this really delightful, um, you know, they've, they've seen it all, they've done it all, they take no crap, and it's really cool to see how the interactions that I have with Kay and with Jen differ with mm -hmm. talking with somebody who is 10 years my junior. So, for example, talking yeah. with Peyton or talking with you and the way mm -hmm. that I think it allows for going back to how I think interactions used to be where mm -hmm. um, do you know the term like it takes a village? You know, like it takes a village yeah. to raise a child. It yeah. takes a village to, you know, manage a village. And mm -hmm. it it's become this point in real life that a lot of people question how okay an older person is with it, uh, being friends with a younger person. Like there's nothing romantic or anything, like literally, yeah, truly yeah. a friendship. The yeah. notion that there is an older person who can truly be a friend to a younger person in a completely mm -hmm. platonic, in a completely healthy sort of way, in the same yeah. way that we feel with other people who are older than we are. So mm -hmm. um, going back to what HubSmod was asking you is what is your experience having intergenerational friendships online that you feel has really enhanced and enriched your life? I know, for example, Januki, like I can go into Januki's chat and be my complete self, like, mm -hmm. and the age is just like not there like if that makes mm -hmm. sense like it doesn't matter how old Januki is it doesn't matter how old i am like the friendship is still there and we've still created like this bond and i've threatened to throw a chicken at her like <laughs> a, a real chicken well, you know <laughs> a real chicken like what that that's she she likes chickens so the first threat that came to my mind was i will throw a chicken at you <laughs> That's true friendship the right there. Threat that's threats, true friendship. Truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Th threatening to th throw your favorite animal right into their their respective online foreheads. Yep, yep, that's friendship right there. <laughs> if, if that's not friendship, then I don't know what is. Honestly, <laughs> truly. Honestly. Truly. But I, I don't know if I would be able to appropriately answer the question in a way that like would make the most sense if that makes sense true i mean it's it's a very hard question because i yeah. think it, it adds this level of wondering whether or not um age really has a an important part to play in online friend i mean they do yeah. for safety yeah. reasons but for safety I, reasons yeah, yes, for safety <laughs> reasons truly but i think with the anonymity of online friendships as it is it does mm -hmm. i think equalize the playing field of how we interact with people so i mm -hmm. think one of the the best ways that i would go about it is you know i'm i'm friends with a um a teen you know, gentleman who who's I'm friends with his mom, right? And he's also okay. a content creator for Minecraft. And so I think mm -hmm. even though I knew him in real life, have his online presence is very different to how he is in person because mm -hmm. obviously. But that means that his being, you know, half my age completely is removed and we focus on the things that we like doing and sharing um, and how yeah. to help each other grow as content creators. And so I would probably argue that online friendships remove the generational 
I guess, segregation of people Mm -hmm. when it comes to interaction. And it allows younger people to feel Mm -hmm. like they are, you know, they have valid voices in communities. And it allows for older people to feel like what they say and, you know, their experiences are still relevant, which is what something I think that you harness very well is you have a very kind, compassionate, you know, part on YouTube that allows for Mm -hmm. people to be held accountable in the same way. So I guess we can, we can come back to this question, but kind of word it differently, because we talked about this level of insecurity and vulnerability with Mm -hmm. online friendships with among content creators and their communities. Where do you think this vulnerability lies with making content especially when money is involved there's a vulnerability and like insecurity of there being a valid friendship because there's like monetary like value being put into it Mm -hmm. so like i could be streaming whatnot and get a super chat of like congratulations on your engagement type of thing Mm -hmm. and it's like whoa like (laughs) you could have just said that to me and i would have been fine Mm -hmm. and now i'm like well how how do i like thank you enough for that like other Mm -hmm. than just saying thank you in a chat type of thing um so like i feel like there's this vulnerability that these people or my chatters or my viewers or subscribers whatever you want to put it aren't like my quote-unquote friends because they're paying me to do this does that Mm. make sense no absolutely it's it's really hard because i think finances in general are some is something that content creators really struggle with because on one hand it's what keeps us going right it's what puts the the food on the table pays the bills and then we can support mm-hmm. other content creators and so i think one of the the most impactful experiences is that finances absolutely do play a role with content creation and online friendships because you know we have friends that are truly supporting us in a in a very uh material sort of way and yeah. that's very hard because if that was that would not yeah. At least in my opinion, in in-person relationships, that would not sit well with me. I feel like yeah, there's a yeah. difference. So uh, yeah. do you feel like you, uh, do you feel comfortable kind of diving deep into that? I mean, we can and see where it goes. Sure. Okay. So um, <laughs> and if it goes poorly, you know, mm-hmm. the power of editing. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Well, it's not going to go poorly. It's mostly just, it's, it's going to go, it's going to go. So um, it's going to go. Yeah, it's going to go. It's, Finances is so, or it's just, it's so hard for content creators in general, because I, I have mentioned this to Cleo specifically, that content mm-hmm. creators often undersell their work. And uh, something that a friend who was burned out from streaming years before I even started had reminded me, it's like, look, you don't need to add more to what you're already doing. You are already putting yeah. in the time and the effort. You don't have to promise the the world when you are already doing more than what a viewer is doing. And that's not to say yeah. that I don't love my viewers and that I don't love the content, like the people who watch my content and who support me as members. But, you know, mm-hmm. I'm already outputting something. And so yeah. that's not me saying that I expect monetary, you know, anything in return, but it's like yeah. we're already doing a thing. I feel that finances plays a different part with friendships that are in person versus online. And mm-hmm. I wanted to hear how you respond, you know, either internally mm-hmm. or how you how you think of finances playing a role in your community building and in, on with your online friendships. I feel as though that I've been vulnerable in like at least my streams about finances. Um I, I talk about how I'm a recovering uh, in debt college student all the time. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so um, my response is usually when I'm streaming and I get like a member or super chat, super mm-hmm. stick or whatever. Um, it's like, why? <laughs> why are you paying me for this type of thing? Which I'm grateful for. Like, I love that it's happening. Um, it helps me, like you said, put gas in my car, put food on the table, pay my bills. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you're my friends. You don't have to do that. What is the line of friendship in money? Like, I don't Versus know. consumer. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's like, I am outputting content 
all the time. I feel like I'm doing something every day when it comes to my YouTube channel, whether it actually be live or recording mm -hmm. or making thumbnails or doing all these other things that involve doing content on YouTube. I'm putting out things and but I'm not expecting anything if that makes sense. Sure. Um, no, I, I think um, this model of online friendships really does put a blaring uh, reflection on mm -hmm. capitalism and how we are defined as not only consumers, but products and, mm -hmm. and the like. And I think what online friendships have done, especially when there's a monetary aspect, is that mm -hmm. we are starting to reshape finances as truly a tool to supporting people because there are people who like the santa squad we can talk about how brings bane mm -hmm. for like the entire summer was just like here's so many memberships for a lot of channels and yeah, a lot of yeah. other you know santa squad people you know who you are but like mm -hmm. there's there's definitely I, I think finances have altered in like this is something that I can give back because you were already giving something as as mm -hmm. a as a friend and because I don't make content or I, I or because they don't make content, what I can do is mm -hmm. I can at least provide the community building as, you know, the material to giving you what you need in order to keep it going. It it really does change the tone of money mm -hmm. with regards yeah. to uh with friendships in general well may before we end and thank you so much for taking the time to to talk with me about online friendships i do feel that hopefully this conversation will spark more conversations offline with well not offline but like off off screen to really assure people and reassure people that no yes your your online friendships are valid uh and mm -hmm. also friends please be sure to like and subscribe follow may on uh you are on youtube and twitter and you don't use instagram really right is there another thing that you do i have an instagram i don't really use it though mm -hmm. <laughs> to so, be honest so it's just youtube and yeah. twitter for now yeah okay yeah i'll be sure to put all of the links in the description below so that you can follow this lovely human being who does so much content how much how much do you output like you stream pretty regularly and i think you put out quite a few videos each week i usually stream five to six times a week and then i i had in december the 25 days of builds mm -hmm. and uploaded 25 built like videos that uh <laughs> that month mm -hmm. um but usually i try to do one video a week mm -hmm. it doesn't always happen but you know <laughs> that that's still like a con like a thing of content a day that's that's pretty impressive that's amazing and by pretty impressive that's incredibly <laughs> impressive i i could yeah. never i could never <laughs> before we end is there a person that you would like to see on gamers gab and what would the topic be um a person that I would like to see on Gamers Gab is Timmy versus Tommy. Oh. And I know, I know. <laughs> I I want um I want there to be a discussion of mods of Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. So they do a lot of Animal Crossing mod content over there. Um so what are like the circumstances of creating mods in games? such as Animal Crossing, and then what are the positives and the negatives of that? I think that would be that a would very be interesting topic. Super cool, especially since like there was a month where mods yeah, went everybody. bananas, <laughs> and I, I I tried to get into the artsy spicy era, and um, the mm -hmm. universe told me no. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but Mike is incredible. I I find mm -hmm. him to be hilarious, deadpan humor. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to have him on, and that would be amazing. Yeah, so that would be great, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, follow, subscribe, you know, go be ha at, uh, at May over at May Place. And we'll catch you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>